Mr. Barton, thank you for spending time with us. You have made multiple trips in a submersible to that Titanic wreck. I gather it takes around two and a half hours to get down there. Can you take our viewers on that journey? What is it like to be in one of those subs as it goes down? Basically, the journey starts with a, with a briefing on board. You get under the submersible, and you have uh, a two, two and a half hour trip down to this to the uh, the seabed, which is a controlled um, a descent under a, a right hand spin, a right hand turn. Uh, you start to navigate your way down, during which time you're in the water column. You're uh, sending a, a pinger radar uh, sight all the, all the way through it, and at 15 minute intervals. Uh, back to the mothership, just to let them know you're still good and, and you're in uh, good shape. So I gather, sir, that you know one of the passengers on board, the French submersible pilot, Paul-Henri Nargelet. Uh, knowing him, what sort of skills does he have that you think might be able to help them with their situation right now? Yeah, our PH is a, a, an amazing individual. He's a, a great submariner. He's ex-French Navy. He's dived the wreck 37 times. There's no one person who's who knows more about deep sea uh, expeditions and, and research than, than PH. Uh, he's a very, very calming individual, very professional every single way. And uh, God forbid, uh, ever in a, in a situation like this, there's, there's one man I'd like to have alongside me, then there'd be certainly PH for sure. And I, I'm trying to imagine, once you get to the wreck, I, I understand it's, it's pitch black. So if you're navigating this sub, what sort of dangers are you looking out for during this this part of the journey? Yeah, as you descend through the water column, at about a thousand meters, uh, you start to lose any ambient light whatsoever. So you have no no idea exactly, you know, what you're looking at uh, because you're trying to conserve power, uh, your 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 life support systems, your communication, your propulsion, navigation, everything's reliant upon power. So as you approach the seabed, you're, you're very conscious of your depth. You start to flare the submarine and slow down your descent. And you then find out exactly where you are. It's, 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 it's quite a, a complicated process. And you talked about power. I, I would imagine if you, if you lose power, and this is all conjecture, we don't know what happened, but if you lose power, how does that affect your descent? Like what happens to you in that moment? Well, if we if we take the scenarios that occurred now with Titan, um, she basically fell out of communication about one hour, 45 minutes into the descent, which if you correlate that to the uh, trajectory of the descent, they're going to be around at least 2,000, 2,500 meter point. Um, so the pressure is significant and building, of course. And I suppose the lower you go, the heavier it gets. So, so does that descent without power perhaps just speed up? I mean, could you get into some kind of spin? 100%. So, well, not to say a spin so much as you just you just increase velocity. Uh, there's little, there's, there's resistance is reduced. You have become metaphorically heavier. And uh, yeah, it's, it, it becomes a, a whole new different game of physics. Dick, people sometimes talk about how much pressure there is down there, but I'm not, I'm not sure that I can relate to it. Can you help us understand? It's the pressure is extraordinary, and it's something which is very hard to correlate. So it's six and a half thousand pounds per square inch. And so if you were to relate that into some kind of tangible meta metaphor, it would be two adult elephants who are balancing on your thumbnail. That's the actual displacement that you'd be exposed to. And so you, you have a way of showing that, I gather, from, from when you've been down in the past. We've taken uh, a regular styrofoam coffee cup, which we, we, we write on, and we, we put the name of the expedition and the time. We fill this with a uh, just tissue paper, and that's then strapped to the outside of the submersible uh, in a net bag. And when we eventually come up topside and, and recovered, uh, the actual same coffee cup is, is basically a, a wow. that size. So. This illustration of the extraordinary pressure that exists and, and we're subjected to, and that makes the titanium hull squeak and, and creak as well. It's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting uh, experience. So I cannot imagine the stress of, of what it's like for them down there, cold, dark, in such close quarters. I also can't imagine the stress of what it's like for you, uh, knowing someone down there and having been down there. And I, I am curious what questions you have at this point. Yeah, I'm, 
the questions are, are really they're more optimistic and, and when we, we can't sit and, and question the whys and wherefores, the morality and, and the motivation. It's all really about finding these uh, five individuals and hopefully recovering them in, in good shape. Um, but sadly, the, the statistics are, are stacking up against a, um, a good outcome, but we're ever hopeful. Well, the whole world is hoping for that. Dick Barton, thank you very much. Thank you.